morning, everyone. Since we spoke last, the President has continued to improve. As with any illness, there are frequent ups and downs over the course, particularly when a patient is being so closely watched 24 hours a day. We review and debate every finding, compare it to existing science and literature, weighing the risks and benefits of every intervention, its timing, as, any, as well as any potential impacts a delay may have. Over the course of his illness, the President has experienced two episodes of transient drops in his oxygen saturation. We debated the reasons for this and whether we'd even intervene. It was a determination of the team, based predominantly on the timeline from the initial diagnosis, that we initiate dexamethasone. I'd like to take this opportunity now, given some speculation over the course of the illness, uh, the last couple of days, uh, update you on the course of his, his own illness. Thursday night into Friday morning when I left the bedside, the President was doing well, with only mild symptoms, and his oxygen was in the high 90s. Late Friday morning when I returned to the bedside, the President had a high fever, and his oxy oxygen saturation was transiently dipping below 94%. Given these two developments, I was concerned for possible rapid progression of the illness. I recommended the President we try some supplemental oxygen, see how he'd respond. He was fairly adamant that he didn't need it. He was not short of breath. He was tired, had the fever, and that was about it. And after about a minute, on only two liters, his saturation levels were back over 40, over 95%. He stayed on that for about an hour, maybe, and it was off and gone. Later that day, by the time the team here was at the bedside, the president had been up out of bed, moving about the residence with only mild symptoms. Despite this, everyone agreed the best course of action was to move to Walter Reed for more thorough evaluation and monitoring. Now I'd like to invite up Dr. Dooley to discuss the current plan. Thank you, Dr. Conley. Um, before I begin a, a brief clinical update on the President's condition, I do want to reiterate my comments from yesterday regarding the, uh, how proud I am to be a part of this multidisciplinary, multi-institutional team of uh, clinical professionals behind me and what an honor it is to care for the President uh, here at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. Regarding his clinical status, the patient uh, continues to improve. Uh, he has remained without fever uh, since Friday morning. His vital signs are stable. Uh, from a pulmonary standpoint, he remains on room air this morning uh, and is not complaining of shortness of breath or other significant respiratory symptoms. He's ambulating uh, himself, walking around the White House Medical Unit without uh, limitation or disability. Our continued monitoring of his cardiac, uh, liver, and kidney function uh, demonstrates continued normal findings or improving findings. Um, so, and I'll, I'll now turn it over to, uh, to Dr. Garibaldi uh, from Johns Hopkins to talk about our therapeutics and, again, our plan for the day. Thank you, Dr. Julian. I just wanted to, again, reiterate what an honor and a privilege it is to take care of the president, but to be part of such a talented and multidisciplinary team here at, at Walter Reed. Uh, the president yesterday evening completed his second dose of remdesivir. Uh, he's tolerated that infusion well. We've been monitoring for any potential side effects, uh, and he has had none that we can tell. His liver and kidney function have remained normal, um, and we continue uh, to plan to use a five-day course of remdesivir. In response to transient uh, low oxygen levels, as Dr. Conley has discussed, we did initiate dexamethasone therapy, and he received his first dose of that yesterday, and our plan is to continue that for the time being. Um, today he feels well. He's been up and around. Our plan for today is to have him to eat and drink, uh, be up out of bed as much as possible to be mobile. And if he continues to look and, and feel as well as he does today, our hope is that we can plan for a discharge as early as tomorrow to the White House where he can continue his treatment course. Thank you very much. And I'll turn it over to Dr. Connolly for any questions. Just a moment, please. The President wanted me to share how proud he is of the group. What an honor it is for him to be receiving his care here at Walter Reed, surrounded by such incredible talent, academic leaders, department chairs, internationally renowned researchers and clinicians, including the support of Dr. Gar Garibaldi from Johns Hopkins. Um, I'd like to reiterate how pleased we all are with the President's recovery. 
And with that, I'll take your question. Thank you so much.